This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 316, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, we have the Hellraiser back. Finally, I found him. He is a difficult man to to find always moving around the world but I managed to speak to him for 40 minutes and 22 minutes today will be in this podcast the normal podcast and then we will continue our conversation tomorrow in the family podcast where we obviously go a bit more personal so for today's episode a few things you need to know one thing to pay attention to the moment where Mrs. R&R kind of appears in the episode, okay? I will talk again about that at the end to tell you what happened, but pay close attention to that bit, okay? We also talk about toilet covers. Now, I'm still not sure that's the right word. So you have the toilet, you have the toilet seat, which generally people sit on because otherwise it's a bit disgusting and that men should lift up when they go to the toilet that's the toilet seat but when you close the toilet so that you couldn't put anything in the toilet if you wanted to if that makes sense that I believe is the toilet cover okay we talk about that too one more term I suppose which probably is good to know now is the term cling film okay now cling film is that transparent thin stuff I'm not sure how to describe it that you would normally put food in like sandwiches you know you have that transparent thing that takes care of sandwiches takes care of them I'm not sure but we also speak about cling film okay so just remember pay attention to where Mrs. R&R comes remember toilet cover and cling film and you will be fine. Also remember that my online course Jungle Listening is currently no longer available because it will be on sale again very soon in a new modified version and there will also be a very special offer. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. So that's enough of me talking. Here is the episode. I will talk to you all again at the end. Happy listening. Hellraiser. How are you today? Very good. Very, very good. And you? Always fantastic, Hellraiser. Always fantastic. Even more fantastic that I have finally tracked you down. Weeks of, yeah, I can do tomorrow. I can do next week. Your classic, I've noticed, is, for example, if we are speaking on a Monday, you say to me, I can do Tuesday. And then I say, so you mean tomorrow and then probably you'll respond to me on Wednesday and then say I can do next week and then this continues for a couple of months and then finally you're here I love the chase um it gives me a bit of a buzz in these boring days so um I just love being chased by you and and now I've been caught it's uh the game starts again I can't wait Mm. can't wait for the next two months the difference is when we were younger and this thing happened, like, do you want to go out tonight? And you would text me probably at 11 o'clock. Oh, you mean tomorrow or something like that? I would be fuming with steam coming out of my ears. But obviously, as you're doing me a favor here, Hellraiser, giving me your time, which is the most valuable asset that you can give me, I have to be nice to you and say like, yeah, sure, mate. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, sure. Don't think I haven't noticed that. <laughs> I've got huge leverage here. Uh, <laughs> the, the how polite you are when I say no, I can't do it, and I can imagine you just at home punching yourself in the balls. Yeah, when we're about to record at the last minute. Oh, sorry, mate, something's come up. No problem, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> I don't mind at all. That is fine. You lead your own life. It is what it is, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I am happy I spent 30 minutes preparing a podcast and now you're not here. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you just go live your life, mate. See you soon, brother. Go free. Um, So anyway, Hellraiser, how do we usually start the pod? Uh, Reviews. 
And do you think we have a review? I don't know. I've not thought about it much. Have we? Uh, unfortunately, no. But oh. we had such a good review a, a couple of weeks ago that I think that, that should last for about three, four weeks. But yeah, in all seriousness, listeners, it's time to pull your finger out. We need reviews. Yeah, just um, stop fucking around, guys. Tell us, exactly. tell us, tell us how great we are, or exactly. or not. What we can improve on, because we're all about improvement, aren't we, Mark? <laughs> totally. And this normally, I try to be nice with the listeners as well. Like I'm nice to you, saying, "Yeah, sure, reviews don't matter," but this is serious now, people. Just we fucking need... do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so on to today's pod. Now I had planned a pod, and the title was most annoying things in the world. But then I thought, when I talk to you, Hellraiser, I often, it's something you bring out in me, I think, the complaining. So I switched it and I have now gone for most embarrassing things that happen to us all the time, which is a pod I actually made with Boom Boom a few weeks ago. Such a great pod. There were a few things left over though. So I thought, let's finish it off. Great. Okay, so I w will say something and then we share our experience if it's happened to us, how we deal with these things. So the first one on the list is telling a story to a group and realising that no one is listening. Has this happened to you, Hellraiser? How do you deal with it? O often, often happens. It might even, even be a story, just, uh, just talking and realising that people aren't listening. It's like when you kind of wave to people and they they just look right through you. It's that, that kind of feeling. <laughs> that, that actually is on my list as well, actually, when you wave to someone and then realise yeah. they're not waving. Um, for that one, I've sort of got tactics for all of these. It's just like the sort of pretending you're doing something with your hair, isn't it? Your hand's moving left to right, waving, and then just kind of just stroke my hair a bit. Depends if you've, if you've given a thumbs up. That's quite a difficult one to do you can't really put the thumb through the hair it doesn't really work you could put it in your mouth do something with it good yeah that could look weirder i think just sucking your thumb while you're walking down the street <laughs> yeah definitely but the uh the story one obviously i'm i think quite known for telling stories and this has happened to me more times than i care to remember and it's just so embarrassing like you're so excited to tell the story and then you just have to kind of just slowly switch off your voice and put your head down <laughs> so anyway uh <laughs> but you must get a lot because you tell a, a lot of stories so your it's like your, hit, your hit rate must you must be quite used to it exactly and so i'm so used to it that when this happens to someone else i feel sorry for that mm. person and then i will then listen but normally this happens because the person telling the story is telling a really boring story and then it's sort of everyone else at the table is talking and then i'm just stuck talking to this boring person and just sort of thinking when is this story going to end they're probably thinking the same thing and i had a really good story and then this guy is just taking me off and talking shit about <laughs> whatever it is yeah that probably happens to you a lot on the podcast. In fact, I've been meaning to talk about this. You mentioned it wasn't that long ago we recorded a podcast. And at the end, you said, oh, I had lots of stories to tell, but didn't have the opportunity because I was busy telling boring stories. Yeah, that did happen. <laughs> so I am in this relationship with you trying to tell an interesting story. And uh, but then oh, it will come a point where do you remember we a few years ago we did the um the podcast where I ran the podcast yep. and I ran out of interesting things to say and I, I, I had to pan back over to you, you see. Do you remember that? That was I, I remember that very well. That was a big moment in rock and roll English history because I think people realised it's not easy telling constant boring stories, <laughs> okay? There's a skill to it. It isn't easy being boring all the time. You make it look easy. <laughs> Which is a pretty uh, rare talent. Natural talent, Hellraiser. Natural talent. Okay, so the next one, you're talking to someone and then you notice accidentally a piece of spit, a piece of saliva has left your mouth and 
fallen on that person? What do you do? Do you stop and say, oh, sorry, I spat on you or continue like nothing's happened? Yeah, I mean, I have I have done that, especially during eating times, because sometimes <laughs> people will ignore it and it'll make it worse. So if I do spit something out when it's a meal, then I always say, oh, sorry, I've just uh, spat some steak on you or whatever but then i've also had times when i'm i remember during covid and kind of no, nobody really knew what was going on but it was you know obviously spread from human to human and i was talking and i spat out and my spit went in someone's directly in someone's eye and uh, <laughs> and it was my boss and she put her she had she just put her sunglasses back on at the time and just looked really really kind of uh yeah upset <laughs> She but may she now. didn't mention it. Didn't, didn't mention, mention it. it. Did not mention Good. it, no. I like that. That's what I do. If someone spits on me, I feel bad for them, so I'm too embarrassed to mention it. And I even then think, like, I can feel it on my face, and I think I don't want to wipe my face. I don't want to wipe the spit away because then they will know that I know that they spat on me. So I just suffer for the rest of of the conversation that is such like a british attitude isn't it like i'm just going to suffer with this person's spit on me so that they don't feel embarrassed about spitting on me what that's just fucking ridiculous isn't it how long would you leave it on for though so say you're having a conversation maybe it goes for like i don't know probably 10 minutes would you just leave the spit of it drip like dribbling down your face (laughs) well i would try to make an excuse to cut the conversation short maybe go to the toilet and wipe the spit off my face Um, unless you know someone well if you spat on my face i would stop immediately and say what the fuck are you doing stop spitting (laughs) on my face (laughs) but if you don't then i find that too embarrassing yeah it's tricky exactly but the eating with people that's a good point because that's why i don't feel comfortable eating with people i don't know it's just I i think it's a private thing i don't want to be eating with people I don't know. For so many reasons. I might, like you said, spit some steak on them. It's, I don't know. Do you always eat alone in the dark? <laughs> well, strangely enough, at my house, there are people that I actually know. One <laughs> being my wife. <laughs> Hello, wife. <laughs> I have to cut that bit out. <laughs> But actually, I probably won't. Mrs. R and R just came in at that exact point, and for some reason, took my phone. I'm not quite sure why she did that. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the last podcast we do. From <laughs> Mike's going to the... start crowdfunding for a new house. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment we were actually talking about her i just want to say just in case she is behind the door still listening <laughs> nothing nothing bad was said all i was saying that is that i know her so i don't feel embarrassed eating around her you hated eating dinners with her i think was the comment <laughs> but that's why for example the first time i went out with mrs r and r i said let's go for a drink because I didn't want to eat in front of her and obviously tried to get her drunk and, you know. (laughs) Bingo. (laughs) No one gets drunk off a salad. Amen. Okay, so on on to the next one. Not muting your microphone on Zoom meetings. How about this? Has this ever happened to you? No, I'm normally pretty good about it because I'm so paranoid about the fact that um if i don't then it could be quite embarrassing in front of people that you know you work with so i'm pretty good at i'm pretty good at that yeah i would say i am as well but on the flip side there is nothing more annoying is there of like a modern day problem of being in a zoom meeting and someone hasn't put their mic on mute (laughs) the worst ones are where there's people within the same room and they haven't got their mics on, or they've got their mics uh, on, and you can just hear the echo reverberating between all of all of them. That's uh, yeah, that's not fun. Fucking fucking bullshit, isn't it? Um, but yeah, when people are actually like shouting, like having an argument with their family, and you just think, Have you had that? Oh, I've had that. I've had that loads of times. Well, obviously, <laughs> I've done 
loads of lessons sometimes even when I was doing lessons with kids and their mums would be shouting at them and then you try to again try to be polite and just you don't want to mention them so you just say yeah if everyone could just put their mics on mute that would be (laughs) that would be great especially you (laughs) Um, but yeah very annoying Um, okay so what about this I I don't think this is so embarrassing, but I think this is a important topic to explore. Leaving the toilet seat up. Do you do this, Hellraiser? I always sit down to go for a piss. So you sit down every time. No, I'm only joking. Of course, I don't. I. <laughs> it's just the effort, isn't it? Because when you sit down, you've got to pull your trousers and pants down. It depends it's what time like... of the day it is. At night time. I would uh, sit down so you don't have to lift it up. It makes a noise, blah, blah. But um, daytime, and if I, yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, I would lift the seat up. If So, I, yeah, I don't, I don't lift it up. What's the point? I just, I've got a good aim straight into the toilet. Have you, have you though? <laughs> well, I mean, there are times where, unfortunately, you do have to get some toilet paper to clean it. But even lifting it up, I think, what's the point? Fair enough. We should get Alessia back in here and <laughs> she could talk us through that. I I am a well-trained dog, though, because Mrs. R&R insists not that not only the toilet seat should be down. Also, is it called the cover? Like the, the bit? Yeah. Oh, also, yeah. I, have to, I have to put that down when I finish in the toilet. Is that... Is that... Why is that? <laughs> because apparently germs spread if that's not down... So I have to put that down. And when we first started living together, she had a sign on the toilet, I would say for six months before I got used to that. And so now I just go around putting everyone's toilet seats down. If I come to your house, Hellraiser, <laughs> I'll just put the cover to the toilet down. I go to my mum's house and she says, why are you doing that? It's just natural. What do you do if you go somewhere and there's no, because sometimes there's just the other cover. Oh, I, I just I just put some like cling film on it or something. <laughs> just cover it with something. Put my jumper on it. Leave it there. I can't bear yes. toilets that are not covered these days. Hellraiser. Wow. Exactly. Um, okay, so this is the classic one. Has it ever happened to you? Tripping up in public. Oh yeah, yeah. That that happens quite often. Quite uh, often. Or falling over. Yeah, yeah. Um. It's ice. It's quite icy here. I've just been walking through the town and slipped over. No one even, no one even looks at you. That's the, that's the worst thing. They don't even acknowledge that you might be a bit hurt. They just walk on past. Yeah, I find it more embarrassing when that's happened to me, and I don't like people trying to help me no. in that situation because you just feel even more of an idiot. I'll never forget when I was on crutches. So. I'd like broken my ankle so crutches obviously the things that help you walk and I was in London and I was trying to go up some stairs and someone was standing next to me trying to help me up the stairs and by doing so blocking like a million people trying to get up the stairs behind me Mm -hmm. (laughs) what can you do you can't say to him fuck off and stop helping me (laughs) no it doesn't go down well uh, so again, you have to pretend that you're thankful. Oh, thanks very much. But really, again, steam coming out of my ears. Exactly like when you tell me, let's do a podcast at five o'clock. And then at five o'clock, you tell me that you can't do a podcast. Just learn to be uh, <laughs> like agile on your crutches as well. I think it's it's, it's down to you. Yeah. You, use the lift. That's for disabled people. You could use that. I, I use a lot of lifts these days with prams and there again there's nothing there's not much not many things worse than waiting for that lift um but when i was on crutches i remember once as well being in london i got on the bus and no one stood up for me to give me a seat but i was i was pleased with that i kind of thought that's fine i don't want any sympathy okay because it just makes you feel like an idiot but you did notice it. You noticed the fact that no one got up for you. So you were well, kind I of actually, expecting it. Well, what I remember from that is a woman was complaining that no one got up for me. And I was thinking, well, why don't you fucking get up? But she was sort of complaining at the other people for not getting up. 
but I thought was she also you a could... cr- was she on was she a crutch friend as well? Was she on crutches? She wasn't part of the crutch community. No, she <laughs> she was she was a woman. She was a woman, yeah, but that doesn't mean that she can't get up. She she looked like a p- perfectly able woman. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, so she was a part of no community, which would make no her community. All... She was a no communityless community. woman. <laughs> I I had that another time on the tube, actually. I was just sitting there. It was like, you know, when a, a seat becomes available and there's like a race to get it. Yeah. So I, I won that race. Yeah. And then this woman sort of just looked at me, sort of stood in front of me. And I then said, oh, sorry, did you want to sit down? Without kind of thinking. And she said, "Uh, yeah. So I just got up. <laughs> and then when she was sitting down again I, I had steam coming out of my ears thinking why the fuck should i like are you sitting there she was like the same age as me it wasn't like she was old or she had a problem that's hilarious <laughs> it was just that she was a woman and i was thinking fuck you like you know I, i'm i'm all for like women's rights but you know equality like they can stand not on a train we, we can stand <laughs> yeah. i was i was fuming this it seems to be the uh did you, theme of did, you this cons- pod. did you consider sitting on her lap? <laughs> <laughs> Just to even things out. Okay, yeah, you can sit there and then we can both sit down. That would have been, uh, that would have been quite interesting. That, that certainly would have been interesting, but no, I didn't do that. Um, but speaking of tubes and sort of day-to-day things that happen, I always find these days, it used to be with a newspaper. If someone was reading a newspaper, I would always want to read the other person's newspaper, even if I had the same newspaper in my hand. But these days, if someone's got a phone and they're like writing a message, when I was on the tube the other day, I am so desperate to see what they're writing. <laughs> and I just sort of put my head over there. Think, oh, are, they send- <laughs> are they sending a naked picture? No. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah, mum, I'll be home at six for dinner. Right. OK. Do you ever catch someone sending a picture of you to someone else on the train? No, I've never had that. That that would be strange. But no, I've never had that, luckily. Um, so another one here is realise that there's a smell and it's you. You're kicking up, as we say. Has this ever happened to you, Hellraiser? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Of course. Of course it does. That isn't, that's a difficult one to deal with, isn't it? I mean, if it's coming from your ass, I suppose, is that what we're talking about? <laughs> well, no, I, I've noticed... I rarely well. have a smell coming from anywhere else. Well, I've noticed this happens very rarely. I'd say once every five years, I just start really kicking up, like body odour kind of thing. Right. And it's... So I, it comes obviously from like armpits, but then... So I spend the rest of... I just remember once in particular then just trying to not move my arms because then if i if i did that people people were were smelling how how, how did that go though i mean so you're just standing there with your arms like a <laughs> pencil pretty much and funnily enough i was with corporal coma mental marky mark and mental marky mark's dad for some reason we were in london and that <laughs> obviously I felt comfortable with Corporal Coma and Mental Marky Mark. And then when Mental Marky Mark's dad went to the toilet, I told Coma and he then said, oh, fucking hell, is that you? <laughs> Why don't you just go home? And so, <laughs> so you did. And so I did. So that's what I mean about with obviously with closer friends that you're not so embarrassed to tell them. So when are you and... do your, your next cycle then? Yeah, I mean that was a long time ago now. So it probably it's probably coming up, isn't it? Prob- probably overdue, <laughs> actually. Um, and actually, speaking of Corporal Coma, he can actually be quite brutal. I was thinking about this the other day, going back to something we mentioned. You're telling a story, and you realise no one's listening. Again, at the end of a night out, once I obviously I was a bit worse for wear telling a story, and then I remember Corporal Coma just cut me off mid story and just said this is a fucking shit story (laughs) and then then again at that point i just went you know what i'm going home i've had enough of this (laughs) it's good you need people like him around otherwise you'd just be talking nonsense constantly over and over and over again (laughs) 
Okay, so we are going to stop the episode there. And for R and R family members, this will continue in the family area tomorrow, where we obviously go a bit more personal and end up talking about the Hellraiser's drinking status, let's say, and also some memories about my wedding and some funny stories from that. Anyway, so did you hear when Mrs. R&R was in the episode? Obviously, she didn't talk. She just came in silently and took my phone. Now, if you're wondering why she took my phone, she took my phone because our son that day that we recorded had a problem, a health problem, nothing serious. And the doctor had to call and it's my phone number registered with the doctor. OK, so nothing strange was happening. And I would also like to add, I see it as quite a positive that Mrs. R&R &R and me, we often swap phones when I don't know. The other day we had to swap phones as well because she could do something particular on my phone. So I said, OK, you take mine and I'll take yours. I see that as a really strong thing in a relationship. I'm not sure about you. I just wanted to share that with you anyway. So looking at some of the vocabulary. So I said that I finally tracked the Hellraiser down. So I finally found him. Let's say I mentioned how listeners you need to pull your finger out and leave some reviews so pull your finger out you need to take action although I did actually then receive a review after recording this episode but we still need them so please pull your finger out and leave me a review then importantly you must send it to me otherwise I won't see it so I also said that people not listening to my stories has happened to me more times than I care to remember. Quite easy to understand, just a nice term that I care to remember. And the Hellraiser mentioned how we should get Alessia back, Alessia being Mrs. R&R, &R, and she could talk us through it talk us through my toilet habits, let's say. So explain it to us. We had the word crutches. So when you can't walk, you need those things to help you walk. Those are called crutches. And I also said when I was on crutches, I didn't want any sympathy. Now, this word I know in romance languages is, well, it means something different. In English, when you feel sympathy for someone, you feel sorry for that person. So I said I didn't want any sympathy, so I didn't want people feeling sorry for me. And then we spoke about the woman on the tube and the Hellraiser said, did you try sitting on her lap? So when you sit on someone's lap, you sit on their knees, let's say. So generally children sit on your lap. It's very rare as an adult. Certainly that I sit on someone's lap. Maybe you do. I'm not sure. And then last but not least, we spoke about kicking up. When you kick up, you smell. OK, luckily doesn't happen to me very often, but I'm not going to lie. It's happened in the past where I have kicked up up. So that is all of the vocabulary. Remember to go to rockandrollenglish.com, click podcast episodes and you will find it all there. And remember, if you want to listen to the rest of this episode and also the extra 1000 extra episodes in the Rock and Roll English family area with transcripts and a place where you build a personal relationship with me and people from around the world, go to rockandrollenglish.com and then click become a member. Thanks everyone for listening. I will talk to you very soon, but in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.